you mm -hmm. can we wait about 20 seconds to start i'm going to tinkle and done no i <laughs> Welcome to another edition of the Gamer Gambit, where a fateful roll of the dice will fill you with awe or indifference. I'll be playing your propagandist today based on my color choices, I think. <laughs> that was completely incidental, <laughs> but, uh, you know, in light of recent events, it's, it's fun. I will be presenting Analog Zine, and which is not technically a game, but rather just some content, some, um, some magazines, some online magazines. Uh, Corey will pre be presenting to us Ominous, and so we'll get right into it. Okay, so in Analog Design, this was actually by Alex Boucher, I believe it's pronounced. Um, and then there was a layout artist, and you can see most of the layout designs that I've put on the screen here. Most of those layouts were done by Cyrus Crash Test, who is a, just a frequent, frequent cover artist. Um, and that is actually one of the things that when I first saw this, I was like, ah, oh, that's cool. I could, I could dig this. And I was interested in seeing more of this interesting art. And it clearly looked like a lot of different artists were working to produce these covers. And I assumed more inside. So, uh, this design started back in, uh, the summer of 2017, I believe. And it looks like it may have ended uh, at the beginning of last year, so the beginning of 2020. Um, although I, I haven't checked recently, so I don't know if they've in fact gone and produced any more content, but um, you can kind of tell in reading through all of these these magazines that it was beginning to dwindle, that the that the strength and fervor was starting to, to fail a bit, to falter. Um, but the, I think a, a big part of that, the subject matter kind of shifted it around. So in the beginning, it was real strong, perhaps, on a particular subject matter. And then by the end, it had kind of, I, I hesitate to say degraded, but it had it was basically covering quick game reviews, not too far, too much unlike what, what we're doing here, but in, you know, magazine form. Um, so I, I think that the subject matter never really got locked in and... What I noticed about it, uh, and there are just nine, I'm showing pictures of nine of them, there are just nine of these magazines. What I noticed about it was that um, it it shifted, it faltered a little bit of the subject matter, that is, because I think that there wasn't enough, like, um, journalistic stuff going on. That is, there wasn't enough of this person or a, a group of people going out and finding the stories that they wanted to cover um, and digging up the the facts or the, the references that they needed in order to present that. Instead, what they did, and I think that this is, I could see myself doing this too. Instead, what they did was they uh, put it out to the community and said, this is what we're doing. Here's our subject matter. And we want you to provide content. And in the beginning, it looked like a lot of people were excited about contributing to this magazine and being published and being a part of something. Um, but as I said, it, it began to falter a bit. So I, I think that what happened is people are people and, you know, their excitement wore off or um, they couldn't find more community members that would contribute. And so ultimately they just, they couldn't keep that content coming quickly enough um, or qualitatively enough uh, to make it interesting. So uh, I keep, so, uh, was not that unlike not, but that's very much not unlike us. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I, I completely understand this. <laughs> I live it. Uh, and I, so I keep dancing around the subject of subject matter. Um, the subject matter of this game, it actually took me or this magazine. It took me a little while to figure this out for myself. Um, and that's probably because I didn't read the meta around this. I just started reading articles and was trying to figure it out. I figured it would present itself, but the subject matter was really clearly around like a, um, I think a gaming community and specifically it was around a development community. So it's the gaming developers community, but then even more specifically or even more niche, it was sort of pointing to, um, I guess, uh, mental health, uh, some of the, the emotional struggles, some of the personal struggles that you have, uh, 
perhaps being in the industry or perhaps being developers or perhaps being, I don't know, that kind of person, you know, the type. <laughs> uh, so the, the stories were fairly personal and that's what it, I struggled to figure out what the subject matter was because there were all these, um, sometimes deeply personal stories being presented and, but they were being presented on or around concepts of games or their job. And they were all the same kind of job. And, and so it just took me a while to figure out that, oh, this is about, this is like a mental health awareness and it happens to be focused around game developers, you know, interestingly enough. Um, and I haven't been in that industry, so I don't know the struggles and I don't, for that matter, know if those struggles are something systemic to that industry or if it just, you know, maybe there are a group of people that, that struggle and happen to be game developers. So um, one of the things, though, that um, I did get out of this, and before I go into the the review that I did, um, this was a great thing. So I read a bunch of articles. I read through a bunch of these, right? I didn't read every article, but I read through a bunch of them. And one of the things that I learned about was uh, this uh, website called NVGOTD, uh, which, which is, of course, nonviolent game of the day. And... Uh, I really enjoyed this. I had never heard of it before. And um, when I started reading this particular article, then I just was kind of, it piqued my interest on all of these specifically nonviolent games. And it's actually got a really long, enduring history uh, for writing about this. And it really fell, and that's why he wrote for this particular magazine, is that it, it really fell into that genre of mental health and game developers. Um, and so this was, this was a whole article around how so many games are of a violent nature and that there's actually a, a lot of pleasure and joy that can be had out of these really interesting games that are completely nonviolent. You know, there's just a lot of uh, very interesting mechanics, interesting stories, great art, you know, all of these things. And I'm sure you've all seen these, these games before. But one of the ones that I actually picked up out of this uh, was this product called Gorogoa, and perhaps you've heard of this, uh, but no, Gorogoa is a puzzle game that I began, I played just a little bit, and then I immediately pulled in my daughter to come and play with me, and she's 12, and um, so this was the kind of game that I thought would intrigue her a lot. The art was beautiful, and I know this review isn't about Gorogoa, but it was just kind of an interesting sideline that I picked this up from reading a magazine article, so it, it did draw me into the right thing. Um, but anyway, check out Gorgoa as well. It's a really fun puzzle game, perfectly appropriate for kids of all ages, adults. It's a little challenging, but more than that, I think the mechanic is just so interesting and unique. You can't help but keep plugging away at it. So back to, uh, back to analog, the analog design. I reported on it as if it were a book. And so what I looked at was, um, I was looking at the writing style and in this particular one, it's written by several different individuals. So it's not one particular writing style. It's not one particular author. It's all over the place. And as such, I thought that there was a bit of um, charm to the fact that you're getting all of these different styles of writing, all these different um, ways to you know they're not all good and i like there was some charm to that because it it really spoke to the individual as i read through them uh so i actually uh liked that that quality that fact um is, is it similar to uh or is it analogous to something like rotten tomatoes for for movies um or am i am i am i missing it as far as they're just being community that, creating content reviewing things or is it less more maybe more broader scope that it's yeah I th is largely movies but this i think rotten tomatoes good. is is more focused and more um I, probably just focused like rotten tomatoes has a, a clear objective and you go there to to solve a question right with um with analog design i felt like you would pick it up off of a uh a dentist's office table you know the the coffee table and you would flip through it and something would pique your interest and you'd read it and you'd put it down but there there's nothing to, to my knowledge there was nothing in analog that would really 
draw you in to wait for the next uh, magazine to come out. Um, and it it didn't seat itself firmly in in this idea that we're always going to be interviewing top game developers or top game companies or top mental awareness coaches or you know it didn't really give me the feeling that I could look forward to something in specific. It was really just a random meandering More of hodgepodge. Hodgepodge, yeah. But it, I mean, it was it was in a fairly similar uh, scope of themes. But it was just people's personal stories. So you didn't have anything to latch on. Everyone was going to be completely new. You had no idea what you were going to read about next. And oh. sometimes that title will interest you and sometimes it won't. And so you just kind of flip through and find the one you want to read and read it. And then next month, maybe there's nothing or maybe there's one in there. Um, so the, so the, this actually gets to the next point. The immersion wasn't there, right? I didn't feel like there was anything that that made me want to read this cover to cover. I just flipped through and, and it was just so varied in that way. Um, and then the the next one, which is kind of related to that is the, the, for me, it was the illustration. It was kind of an X factor for the magazine. So had there been more of an X factor, uh, and for me that was, I was looking for more illustration because that's what drew me in initially, those front covers, um, then I, I might have been, it might have been more immersive to me. I might have been drawn to really flip through and find the art, which would have probably had me read more articles. Um, but as such, there wasn't any. Like, there was very little art whatsoever inside of the magazine. It was maybe clip art, you know, and then just articles. Um, and they, you know, they, uh, they did some styling, some layout styling to make the articles look interesting, and they would you know, apply interesting fonts or um, just styles to the text itself to kind of give it some some personality. But that wasn't enough to give it an X factor to me. Um, and then the, the next one is theme. So theme, again, was fairly scattered. So it, it took me a little while to get the hang of it, but I did, I did get there. Um, mental health in the gaming industry, very niche. Um, but when I looked back at the holistic work, I felt like, okay, yeah, now that I, I get that, I can see it, and it's not necessarily where I am or what my interest is, but now I get it, right, as I look back at this, and so I, I thought they did pretty well, actually, on theme, given that that was the theme. <laughs> uh, and then the very last category on here is actually the <clears throat> the engagement, and the, so, as opposed to immersion, or immersion, uh, drew me in and put me into a different setting. You know, it wasn't really designed to do that. Um, but the engagement was, again, hit or miss. So some stories had me engaged and some didn't. And maybe different editing, publishing might have solved for that. But I think to some degree, the the creator, um, Alex Boucher, you know, was just looking for content. He needed people to write stories and, and get it into him on time so that he could publish them. <clears throat> um, so it suffers a little bit because you you don't necessarily get the best written stories every time, right? Just back to the matter. So uh, all said and done, I gave it two out of five on the magazine, which is a little heavy. And uh, but you know there were some some nuggets like the nonviolent game of the day. I thought that was a nugget in the the game that I actually pulled off of that site, and that's a site now that I go back and look at periodically because. You know, there are interesting things. So I did learn about that, and it's good. And there were some other stories that I thought were actually pretty good, too. But out of nine magazines, there were probably... Um, there's one that I remember well, and there were probably three total that I actually liked. You know, I really enjoyed that particular article. I like that, that meant something to me. Okay, so this is um, ominous. So this game is very reminiscent of the early Final Fantasy genre of games. Um, I, I, I can't remember the what that's officially called if it's like side side screen combat or something like that where you have your party you have you and or a party of people and you can and you roam around and then eventually you get into fights yeah um, I know exactly what you're talking about but I'm not sure what you call that I think there's yeah I, I, can't, I can't remember I, I, that's something one of the things I should know um so this game is one of those. It starts off with 
with what the character just said, where you're standing here, surrounded by lava, and your character just sums up and said, well, how did I get here? And so the whole premise of the game basically is you you reliving or you playing out the past to have to answer how you got there. Um, the game is very over the top when it comes to puns, memes, <laughs> as far as the characters interacting, um, which by this stage in the game, you know, you're a few minutes in and you you get it. And then it just, it just starts to layer on more and more. And at the end of it, you're kind of like, <laughs> to me, it was just like, it was just way over the top and obnoxious by the time it was done. Um, but that's the whole, the whole summary, I guess, of the game is you start off with like, well, hold on a second, how did I get here? And then you go back to this area and you multiple times, if you quote unquote, lose the game, um, or you go down a path that is not, I guess it's technically an ending where you lose, but um, there's a couple of points. There's basically a whole bunch of endings to the game um, and you get you get scored at the end and you can basically like unlock, you can get more and more and more and more and more, increase your score by replaying the game and finding all of the other endings. Uh, so is it, um, is it roguelike in that regard? You're intended to die and you power up in doing so? Oh, yeah. I'm supposed to be looking after my No, it is a you didn't follow the narrative or you made a choice <laughs> that they felt was necessary for your character to whether it was die or whatever else. So you the, the game the game's just over. And you okay. just go back to <laughs> the beginning. Um I must have forgotten to feed the fish. I better replace it before Luna finds out. So in in one of the things that I thought it was I thought it was kind of interesting but at the end it was just it was it turned out to be more kind of annoying but uh, some of the endings some of the endings are only defined i guess is it's kind of just for me to describe what i'm trying to say um they're not just they're they're endings but the way that you find out that they're endings is that you perform an action in the game and you go back to that original starting area and your character self narrates and says, no, wait, that's not how it happened. And then you go back to a, a, like you're a save before. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, um, so what I'm so getting so that far is that the, the narration is great. I feel like you're on rails. Like you don't have a lot of agency in this game, but the, the you're, narration you know, is, is really like top quality. Like it sounds like, well-recorded voices they're acted um it's great there's there's a couple where i would expect one voice and i got something that totally did not fit the character to me yeah i guess but otherwise yes i mean the the, the recording the quality was good the dialogue i didn't like like, like i writing. said was just yeah i mean the writing yeah, is the, silly the, like the writing, you said it, and it's meant to be that way it's meant to be obnoxious so at the end of the at the end of the day you're trying to get um, your sister's gold, your goldfish or whatever dies, your sister's goldfish, um, because you didn't feed the goldfish. So you're trying to get another one. And, um, and the whole entire game is in that town and none of the building, you can't go into any of the buildings except for like three or four. All the other ones just have doors that don't work. Um, other things, the, the, pop central palace thing you would expect to like you know maybe go in there at some point no a lot of the characters dialogue that you engage with is irrelevant to the actual ending it's just there for fluff material to make the town seem alive right um but that's that's the overall from a summary standpoint i guess i kind of get got away from it it's a it's it's set in a combat kind of system which i fast forward through here at the end where you go through it, so you're at that stage where you're sitting here. Maybe this is less Final Fantasy and more Fantasy Star, but uh, the Fantasy Star series. But you're roaming around down here, and then occasionally you get into battles, and you have to select using using an ability, right? So what's interesting is that I I got a broom handle, or I got a broom um, to use as a weapon when I was talking to that shopkeeper, and this whole entire time I did not know that it didn't like auto equip or anything. <laughs> 
Um, so, so I did the majority punching. of these battles with my fists. <laughs> and then finally I realized, oh, maybe the, but the broom's not equipped. So I went in here and I equipped the broom. And then the things I was taking like three or four shots to kill, wondering how I was ever supposed to get through this dungeon <laughs> without finding a way to heal the initial dungeon. Once I started using the broom, everything was like one or two shot. Right. Um, and then until, you know, I get to the end. But that was the game um, from a from a score standpoint. Um, I gave it a, for art, I gave it a, I gave it a one. I mean, this is pretty, what you, what you would expect. Mm -hmm. Um, there weren't anything that I would say were bad graphics or cheesy graphics. They're easily passable for, for the genre. So that was, so that was pretty good. Well, and it's um, a lot of artifacts ultimately, like this is just a lot of material. Um, yeah. So art for art, I gave it a one, um, for the mechanics, I gave it a, I gave it a zero. The mechanics were very similar, um, but there was there they were I don't want to come out and just say the mechanics were broken, but the the overall um, what you'd expect out of this game is some of what was delivered, <laughs> which is you interact with people, you find out some story, maybe more about your yourself, your own kind of you know journey or what you're what you're doing, and that so you interact with people, you're walking around and constantly look you know for me I'm I look for those secrets where in those two D yeah, uh, 2D, 2.5D worlds where there's like a pillar sticking out and it's in the corner of a room so you can like walk up and you can, it looks like you can clip behind it and you go back there and it's just like all of a sudden the screen moves into like the secret room, you know? Um, so I, I, yeah. <laughs> so I look for that kind of stuff in these kind of games. Um, didn't find any. But, so you go, you learn a little bit more about the character, the story, what you're, what it is you're doing, why, interact with people. And then there's some type of combat where you are doing weapon, weapon item, armor selection. Your some characters maybe are um, more like magic or some type of uh, I don't want to say force sensitive, you know, like a Jedi, but they're they're sensitive or something to whether it's magic or anything else. So you have some type of alternate skill ability character. You have a main kind of fighter if you want um, that that sort of stuff. Um, and then also with the fighting, I would I was expecting more of being able to make those choices. And the game's just not flushed out or long enough to mm -hmm. have those things kind of in there. But those those are the, the mechanics, I guess, I would think out of the game from the fighting perspective would be man, equipment management, more armor, less armor, learning spells, um, weapon choices for different characters, even if it's just you. You know, going around, finding a helmet, increasing your armor, increasing your magic points, getting you know all of that the, that kind of stuff was just not present in the game. So okay. I equipped the broom. I equipped the broom. I possibly could have beat the game without equipping the broom, but I'm I'm glad I equipped the broom. But other than equipping the broom, there's <laughs> there's an item shop in there in the game that just has all of this stuff that there's no way possible um, to that at least in my short time playing the game, there's no way possible to accumulate enough of the the gp the, the gold points guild points whatever they call them gypsy um, points or gypsy points yes yeah you caught on to that and i'm gonna play <laughs> the game um so the the yes so that there wasn't enough points to like ever buy and so it was that was another to me that's part of the the game the, the game mechanics is interact is doing those things is shopping planning items having items ready if you're gonna go to a boss fight or you know a boss fight's coming maybe you're fighting a dragon you need you need ice spells and not fire spells. You need yeah. so all of that, all that core stuff. I felt was it's just the game short enough. It's just void, um, or put in the item shop. Like I mentioned, the item shop. It's just put in there for fluff. I never right. purchased anything from the item points in the chest when I went that dungeon um, that you go into is the only dungeon in that's in the game, okay. and that one little corridor is all that is there. And there's one chest that's there right when you go down at the bottom that has two strands of duct tape, which is the game's equivalent of heal, uh, healing potions. So you use the duct tape in the boss fight and you win, you know? So th anyway, so that, that was just, that was, that was the, that was the mechanics section, kind of a longer diatribe, I guess, um, or a void. Um, the controls, I gave it a one. They're everything that you would expect. There was a couple of things that were um, a little, a little flimsy that I almost uh, docked, but I didn't feel like it was so bad that, deserved a nix of the whole entire category okay um if that makes any sense so some of the menus when you're trying to like equip stuff 
um, selecting that, going through and up, down, left, right, going to try to like find the item, select it. How do you know that the item is selected or how do you know that the item is equipped? Those, those, those kind of controls to move, manage your inventory. Um, they were, they were present, even though overall the inventory system you didn't need to engage with at all outside of equipping the broom and using the duct tape. Um, the story narrative, I gave it a zero. Um, it was, it was extremely, extremely sarcastic fun way over the top and that's Yo, maybe what they were shooting for and fun was it, it was a real just, was it a, a coercive or a uh a concise story or was it just like almost random it seemed i would say more of the latter um, okay as it starts out you're trying to figure out how you got here and you're not even you're, you don't even self-narrate to know what here is you just know that you're surrounded by lava apparently with no way to escape in the yeah. bottom boss of a you know whatever else so maybe that was described fully in one of the endings that i did not get to yeah. um but nonetheless i never found out why i was actually there um all i knew was that um after i was after you go through the gypsy portion it ends it cuts back to that original screen and they add in a little more narrative to bridge the to segue into the next segment when I spawned, excuse me, in that house in the town. And then from there, um, there was a mention in the dialogue about feeding the fish, and I just left the, the house. I went to exit, and the game took takes control of your character and moves you back. And what I didn't notice the first time is when I when I went to the exit and the game took control of my character, mm -hmm. it it removed a fish out of the fish bowl that was sitting on the shelf. And then, um, I can't remember if that was the first or the second time. And then you try to exit again, and it does it. Um, and each time, the the your character says something about it. And yeah. I'm like, I'll feed the okay. If I need to feed the fish, need to get fish food, whatever. Just let me out of the house, you know, for now. <laughs> How about how about just let me walk, you know? So I was kind of frustrated at that point. But yeah. then it turned out that me leaving the building without doing something there, the fish died. Better so the rest of my adventure. The rest of my adventure was finding a replacement fish. Yeah. So the whole reason how I got there or whatever else was never fulfilled. The narration totally changed to <laughs> I need to get the fish. And then the boss battle at the end, um, at least in the ending that I did, there is a giant, if you saw that at the end there, there was a giant mutated fish in a tank that I had to fight. <laughs> and then after I fought that. It's your own nightmare. Ended. After I won that, the game ended because I yeah. got the fish, I guess. Um <laughs> So yeah, it just it just seemed kind of kind of more kind of more random. You so, showed mastery. Um, <laughs> well, this this is straight up like uh, a one that I reviewed a long time ago called Voltage, and it, so much so that I feel like Volt Age. So much so that I feel like these are all based on the same engine. So whatever engine these guys are using to build these RPGs, uh, I think produces... it's RPG Maker. Oh okay, yeah. I, so I think it's I think it's listed in the either in the site or I can remember it was a watermark on one of the screens yeah. or something like that, or if it was listed in the, on the itch dot itch IO page. It's um, a, it's yeah, a great I'm product because sure it's producing maker. consistent results and, you know, in-depth content and a lot of these mechanics, they don't have to create themselves. Right. Yeah. I mean, I have no idea how many of these assets are packaged with RPG right. maker that they just say, you can use these free willy nilly. And then you add in your own and just, just create content. We want to see people using them. Right. Um, so there's a there's a plug for RPG Maker out there, there I guess. Um, the final category was sound. I gave it a I gave it a one for sound. Um, the the strut the walking around town kind of music it wasn't uh, it, it wasn't noticeable in a okay. sense where it wasn't like oh my goodness I'm still listening to this yeah, because yeah. I'm walking around town I'm looking for secrets Some I'm good engaging with people. Tunes. And even the character voice uh, when the characters voices that sound doesn't cut out it just continuously loops. So when you're interacting with characters, their dialogue comes out on top and it still kind of fills the background. It doesn't, it, you don't seem like you're changing, you're changing the ambiance, ambience, mm -hmm. if that's, if that's the, the right phrase. So I mean, the, the sound, <laughs> the, 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 the sound in combat also, it was, it was expen expected. You heard those. Yeah. Old swishing and, yeah. flashes. Yeah. Swashbuckling kind of sounds what you expect in these kind of games from slashing to what a what a something that would sound more like a blunt attack would sound like versus yeah. your your fist the you know whatever the pals and the biffs i guess um so overall that brings the score to a, a three out of five 
Okay. Um, and that was, uh, that was, um, I don't think I said it at the beginning is that was ominous by dusty tome. So um, three out of five is okay. Did you find, I, I get the sense that you did not find the game enjoyable. You would not like spend a lot of time in it. No, because the, the story for me to play any of these games, I've, I've never really been a story kind of driven person, mm -hmm. but I still like to, I still like to understand a little bit about why the game, what, what the game has put together for yeah. me. The lack of it um, is noticeable, right? Like <laughs> it's right. not what holds least, you, but if there isn't one, then it, it definitely deters you. Yes. Yeah, so if there's multiple, like you take the final fantasy kind of games, final fantasy, fantasy star, you're, you put together a party um, and the different characters have their own motivations for wanting yeah. to join your party or not. And the absolute depth of each one of those might be something that I don't latch on to, but the, who the character is and why they are there, I, I pick up a little bit on that stuff and that makes the game just that extra notch enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Um the 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 first character ever i kind of like fell in i don't say fell in love with but i just like this character is just awesome and that was i think the character's name is ren from fantasy star 3 okay and he was a mechanical kind of character and i don't want to say like a full cyborg or robot but he could he could transform in a sense and throughout the game you unlocked some things that he could transform into for transportation. So at the end, he transform he can transform into a ship and fly you around. Yeah. Um, Final Fantasy always has like an airship or a blimp or you know something like that at later stages of the game that you unlock. So anyway, this goes like you did with Gora Moore. This kind of goes away from Omnis. But from to answer your question, is there there was nothing there was nothing there for me to latch onto. I did not have too much of any reason to be or explore for this character or to replace the sister's goldfish. Um, it just, it just wasn't there. The interaction with all the people around town, it was all, it seemed more placed in experimental versus actual narrative creating and you couldn't leave the town. So, I mean, it was, it was the game was being really small. small anyway. Yeah. Okay. Well, three out of five. Um, well, uh, that's a good couple of games, and so welcome back to the new year. Hopefully, we can we can get back into the regular. Uh, what are you drinking today? Um, this is hot herbal tea. Hot herbal. That's a double H. Yes, <laughs> emphasis on the H. Herbal. Herbal. Herbal tea. <laughs> All right, as usual. Uh, good game. Good game, Olaf.